Hello, I'm um, Jason Smith of illosmith.com and I would like to put together a little tutorial for you, um, mainly for my friend. Uh, we're doing a sort of Skillshare at the moment, so trade for trade on uh, on our abilities and um, utility belts. Um, basically, I'm just going to show you a few little handy uh, tricks in Illustrator. Um, this is CS6. Um, they the, the, the tricks apply across the board really with Illustrator. Um, just basically um, manipulating shapes and um, just making life a little bit easier with um, with a few shortcuts, so you haven't got to really think too much about what you're doing and such. So. Um, let's get cracking. Uh, let's open up a new f uh, file, artboard. Um, you don't have to name it here, but uh, you can name it here to save yourself like having to write in the um, the box, the field when you uh, when you save it at a later date. Um, so I'm just going to call it. Shapes and stuff. I tend to save my stuff out at 800 by 600. Uh, save it out at whatever you want. Um, you know, this is mainly for um, portfolio purposes. Uh, as it's going to be on on the web, I'm just going to keep it at RGB. Um, if you're going to, if you have any uh, preference to want to print any of your work, always change it to CMYK, um, and then. Set your uh, PPI pixels per inch to 300, nice and high. I think you can change that as well when you're inside. Um, usually with print, you want to work in millimeters or inches. I think it's crazy inches, it is millimeters. But okay. Um, I'm going to save it out now so then I know it's, it's, it's uh, where I want it to be. I know where to find it. I've created a folder already. Save, save. Okay. Yeah, like I was saying, if you wanted to change some, if you wanted to change the file type to uh, CMYK, when you're in and established, you change your mind. You just go down to File, or up to File, and then drop down to Document Color Mode CMYK Color, and the uh, Document Setup. You can change resolution to high and mess about with all of these little knickknacks. Okay, I am going to not really uh, give you so many shortcuts. Um, I mean really this is for people that may have used the software before and know their way around the keyboard. Um, if you watch my previous tutorial on um, making a background tile, there's lots of shortcuts and stuff I've used in that. But uh, I want to I keep this one quick, so uh, I'll um, I'll not be uh, dictating my shortcuts as I go. Um, I'll uh, obviously I'll tell you what I'm using though, so it makes it easier. Um, let's make a heart. Forever, I found it super difficult to trace out a heart using the pen tool. Um, I mean, you know, you can bend your shapes and such however you want, where you think the anchor tag, the anchor points should go, and then copy, replay, yeah, copy and repeat it, and then have it on the other side, and then tweak it and whatnot. But I found a better way of doing that. Uh, and that was with using the simple circle tool. I'm going to make it red. That's, we can see what we're doing. We're going to stick it on the white page there. Lovely. Okay, so what we want to do with our circle is obviously if we drag a circle across, it doesn't really look much like a heart, does it? Even with our um, our lines there, you can't you can't see the shape. I mean, mainly what I do is I envision. What my what a shape what what makes up an object 
and then I um I mess about with the shapes to see how uh, I can manipulate them in any way to try and get them to uh, to to be the form that I want them to be. I mean, as you can see right there, I mean, easy way of making an eye if you were ever to make an eye. You've just you've got your two circles next next to each other. You just use the um, uh, divide tool, double click to get in there, take those two out, and you've got yourself an eye. Rotate it. Ding. But we don't want to do that. Not right now, anyway. So, what we want to do is we want to use our... Oh, no we don't. I'm sorry. There we go. I use the shortcut so many times, I don't even know where they are in here now. <laughs> On the toolbar. So, we want to convert anchor tag point to Shift-C. We want to, dink, make that into a point. And then we want to use our direct tool, uh, cursor tool and holding shift, drag it down to where we think we want it. Here you go. I mean, now you can see it's a teardrop or a raindrop. That is one way of making said shape. But for our hearts, what we do is we just tilt it on its side slightly Object, transform, reflect, copy, drag it across. Don't bother lining it up because we're just going to use the divide tool over here in the Pathfinder. You can find your Pathfinder up on Window, Pathfinder. If you haven't already got it out, of course. Um, hit divide, double click, select, unselect the ones you don't want to delete, delete. There you go. Nice heart. You can you can change the um, the radius at which you've got the uh, the the original teardrop um, point in uh, at what angle you've got it. So you you, you make the heart as what uh, the heart as wide as you like, um, or uh, you know as chubby and chunky as you like. With this, I'm going to keep this. We'll use that in a bit. Another way of making a heart, which isn't necessarily going to be nice and cartoony like this one is by dragging out our rounded rectangle tool and doing the same sort of thing transform reflect copy we can leave it we can leave it where it is you can see the heart right there or as it looks a bit Long, elongated. We'll, uh, we'll drag these across. You can see the heart. Can you see? There you go. It's another way of making a heart. Oh, as you can see, this one. Oh no. It looks all right. I mean, I can see. I think mean, you can see. But as you come round the corner there, it hits this point and it just goes dead straight. And you can mess about with where where the um, where the point where the point mark uh, crosses here. As you can see, as you come as you come down on this shape and the rounded rectangle, you have your anchor point there, and that's when it goes straight. So, I mean, you could. Line it up like so, and then there you go. A little bit better, but anyway, two ways of making hearts, lovely shapely hearts. Uh, I'm going to save that. Now I'm going to make my favourite animal. I'm going to make a bear out of just using lovely shapes, and this is how I work all the time. I envision my work in shapes, and then I um. I just manipulate them to uh, how I want them to look. I am going to make our bear orange. I'm going to also cut our stroke on. I'll turn the stroke up so we can see what we're doing. I'll make two different shapes. I'll make two different shapes of bears. I'm going to make a rounded head one and I'm going to make a teardrop one. So I will hold Alt and drag across our shape. 
so to copy it, to duplicate it, and then we'll hold Shift and C, drag it down. I mean, if you if you've ever studied what bear looks like, um, I like to study what animals look like, make them out of shapes using my buggly eyes and stuff. Um, break their break their their features down into shapes. I, that's what I tend to do with anything I'm looking at. I, I see it, I look at it, and then I I break it down in my head into shapes and imagine how I could illustrate that. Um, I mean that's just my technique, everyone's got their own technique so you know go with what, what works for you um, but if you look at a bear face on they've, they've got this um, they've got this, this sort of point to their to their uh, to their chest if you like this is their head and it comes down to a point where, where their chest would be, the V of their chest um, with a big lump of fur right there so that is what I'm doing there. I'm going to oh, select both of my anchor points using my direct select tool, drag it down a little bit, tiny bit, to, sh to change the shape just slightly, as you can see. I want it to be symmetrical. I mean, I can drag these down, but I mean, without guides, you're, you're almost shooting in the dark guessing where they are. I mean you can always draw a line across. Here we go. Pretty much spot on. That's a few years of practice I might add. This one's slightly you can pull it down to the to the to the line there or snap to if you've got your snap to guides on. And then that's how you can make sure that they're symmetrical. Delete. There we go. Lovely. Right, okay, let's start with our round head bear. I'm going to make some ears. So I'm going to drag out my rounded rectangle. You can change the shape of your rounded rectangle, the corners even, using the up and down key. Make it dance. Hold up, and that will drag it straight to its final destination. Drag down, and it will make the rounded uh, corners square, which kind of defeats the object of using it if you're just going to use a, a rectangle or pointy corners. Um, now, I can either use my line tool, like so, and then cap off the ends with a rounded cap to make the inside of our ear, or I can take my rounded rectangle, object, path, Offset path, we'll have a look at the preview, and then we'll just hit down on the keyboard, and then we've got um, we can go into the minuses basically, that's going inside of our rounded rectangle. So there you go. Um, and if you can see what it's going to be yet, I'll group it and then drag it around. If you hold shift when you're dragging a shape, it it hits the uh, hits the points of say a compass, and uh, that's quite helpful. Rather than sort of dragging it around slowly and guessing that you've got it at a direct angle, if you if you feel like you want to change it and you want you you want to straighten it up to where it was before, it's always best to um, hold shift and then hit it at this angle, and then you can always drag it back to how you wanted it or up to a straight. To a straight line um, and edit. That's just handy knowing that. Right, I did that a bit quick, didn't I? I'm doing it without even telling you I'm doing it. Uh, object, transform, reflect, copy, drag across. Got a couple of ears. There we go, that's what they are. I'm going to group them. I'm going to pull this to the front by holding Command, Shift, and square bracket. Uh, close square brackets. I'm going to give this a white background so then we can see what's going on. You can see what it's starting to look like now. Um, now for the nose, I'm just going to go whoop, like so. Like I said, I'm just going to use shapes to make 
my creature, my bear, um, and I'm going to use a slightly different technique on this bear. So this one will be silly simple, silly simple way of doing making a bear. On the other side, it will be using a few different techniques. Right, round a rectangle tool again. Oh, I'm not using layers. I'm a bit naughty. I don't tend to use layers. I just tend to sort of shuffle my stuff top to bottom. But um, <laughs> it doesn't always work. There we go. We've got our. I have to call this a snout. Yeah, let's call it a snout. That's what. I, that's what that is. Um, I am going to give him round, round little tiny eyes. I mean, however you make characters up, I uh, I keep my eyes small. I tend to anyway. Um, and then I, uh, you know, work on the features. I, I usually keep my features of the face small actually, and keep the head big. Again, that's up to you how you wanna, how you wanna do stuff. You can get rid of this line. We can just combine these two shapes. Dink like so using the unite tool, and then we've got ourselves a snout looking like so. And we can just go to the center point if you've got your anchor points all switched on. We can, and then sort of add a little bit of detail like so using the line tool. Um, I'm going to give him some cheeky cheeks circle. We'll use the cut tool, the scissors, which is up here. If it isn't out, it's under the eraser tool. Rubber. As we call it in England, a rubber. Um, but that could be something else also. But there you go. Uh, that's probably why they don't call it rubber over here. Um, shift and... Uh, I'm sorry. Try again. C, just C. I lost my mind just then. Um, we'll get rid of the fill, the fill Mitchell. Um, there we go. Give him some cheeky little chops. Make him chubby faced. Reflect. Copy. I mean. To make this actually symmetrical, I'm going to start again. Ignore what I just did there. Group them. Object. Transform. Reflect. Copy. Drag it across. There we go. And group them. And we can center them. We can center everything right now if we like. Um, we'll just drag across all of our shapes. Hit our uh, main shape that we want to align everything to. Um, if you've got that set up anyway, it's um, align to key object. Um, It'll either be under your transform, uh, transform, sorry, align, uh, just down here in the bottom corner on your more options, um, or it will be up here above your above your artboard. Um, you've got uh, align to selection, align to key uh, key object, align to artboard. That'll obviously align you to your your page that you're working on. Selection being um, just. Uh, what you've selected, uh, these two shapes, if you were to select them and then align to selection, it would just straighten them up um, according to each other. Uh, and then align to key object, that will align them uh, to the object that you've got the highlighted. So you select them all and then just click the one that you want to um, align them all to and then align them just like so. And there you have it, bare head. Nice and simple, nice and fun. Uh, I'm going to turn that. Yeah, I like rounded, I like smooth rounded edges. So we can fill this in if we want to. Get rid of that. If, this is a little handy, handy bit here. You want the same colour there. You don't want to go in and then try and find it. You could always go in here, find your hex number down here, your hex code, and then copy it and paste it. Or what you could do is just click on this stroke that has the colour, or the fill that has the colour, click on the fill, and there it pops out down the bottom there. So you just plink, like so. I think it probably look better white, didn't it? Yeah. Cool. One bare head. We could add a little detail. We could give him a little chin if we wanted to. 
copy and paste. Little trick for cutting circles down, use the line tool, like so, drag it across our shape to whatever placement we want it on. Um, we're going to line that center. I always it's a good habit to do that, so then at least we know that we are we are cutting our shape directly in the middle, nice and symmetrical. Um, if that's how you want it, anyway, uh, just align it to the center. Use our divide tool. Get rid of that top one. Use our scissor tool. Just pressing she, uh, C C C on the keyboard. Get rid of the top one. Um, drag it down a little bit. Or drag it out a little bit. So we'll drag it, we'll knock it down a few. He's got a little chin now. Or he actually looks like he's got a big smiley face, doesn't he? Bye. <laughs> I'm going to group all of that so I can drag it wherever I want. And it will stay where I want it. Okay, let's move on to bear number two. Let's save it first. See a little star up here. If we were to move our bear there, look, a little star pops up. That means save your work. Your work is unsaved and I might crash any minute. So, uh, command or control S, saved. Lovely. Um, right. Bear number two, I'm gonna give him round ears. So a circle. Uh, and we could either, I could either copy and paste that circle and drag it in so he's got a round uh, ear hole like so. Oh, or, oh, drag it across so I've got another one. So we can, we can sort of decide then. Control and shift and C, sorry, make that a point. Drag it down, so we've got a nice little point there. Uh, if we make that, we drag that round to the uh, the edge there. Drag him over. Let's give him a white feel. Send that to the back using, um, excuse me, using Shift Command and Open Bracket, uh, Square Bracket. Give this a white feel too. Um, do we prefer that or do we prefer that? Don't quite know, actually. <laughs> um, anyway, you have a couple of options there to mess about with. Um, that's just good practice, sort of getting your lines nice and straight, holding shift, dragging that down. I'm going to go with the rounded ear. Group them, drag them across. Line them up as best you can using the lines that you have in place. You can always use a grid if you wanted to, but nah. It's good practice. Good practice getting your eyes all lined up. So then you'll spot something that's out of place. Now we're going to make his we're gonna make another snout. This time I think we're going to make it a little bit shorter. And we're gonna give him a different, slightly different shaped nose. So not squared this time, rounded, rounded, like that, overlapping those two shapes, rounded rectangle again. Uh, we're going to unite these, clink, like so. Making note of these tools over here, these are the best, these are your favourite tools ever. These are my favourite tools ever anyway, the handiest in the world. Mainly only really use these three, um, minus front. Um, so that will just chop out anything that's set on. Um, if you've got a shape on top of the other one, I'll show you for example. This one is on top of this one. I will go chomp. Oh no, it's not. Uh, yes, it is. I'm sorry. The, the object on top will be cut out of the object behind. Um, this one is the divide tool. Now we can pull that apart because we've just dissected our shapes. Um, or the unite tool, which just clumps them together to make a lovely shape. Um, basically how I manipulate shapes into looking how I want them to look. Um, 
Now we've got this right here. We don't want this, do we? This looks poop. But if we were to say minus that, I mean, that doesn't look terrible. But what we could also do, in fact, that looked really good, is use another rected, rounded rectangle. And we could shape that to however we wanted to. Um, lining it up uh, to the edges of our uh, sh shape there. Highlight them both. We know that they're lined up because we've just dragged it from one side, from one line to the other, but you can always line them up again, but doing so might um, knock out where they were. And if that was the case, um, you want to just zoom right in and make sure that these lines are sort of sitting on top of each other. Um, you can just drag it out and then drag it. So it will lock into place, intersect. And that's what you want. You want them to sort of sit on top of each other like that to get a nice straight symmetrical shape. We're going to use a divide tool. We're going to get rid of our extra little bits. Oh no, we want that one. We're going to now use our unite tool. Plunk. Oh, no. Oh. Don't mind me. There we go. Lovely. Shapely. Uh, I'm going to get rid of that little point there by using the corner over here on the strokes. Round a join. Clink. Lovely, jubbly. We have one snout. Now let's make him a nose. Him or her, whatever he might be. I'm going to use the pointy tool, drag down my nose to give him a, a lovely nose. We've actually got the rounded corners on, as you see there. So, you see that? So it's lovely and pointed. But you can also, if you wanted to round this off slightly, go back to the, go back to your um, what is this called? Convert anchor point tool. Um, <laughs> hold it, click it, and then drag left to right, and then you can sort of if you want to hold shift, you can pull the, the little um, uh, anchor bars, whatever you want to call them, out and uh, round it off to your pleasing. I quite like that. I'm going to leave it like so. Pull it up to the top there. Line her up. Shapes intersect quite lovely and nicely. Now, give him some eyeballs. Another way that I make eyeballs. Just a line. Round off the edges. Mess around with the stroke weight. Give him some cheeky cheeks. Cut tall. Scissors. Get rid of what we don't want. Take that weight down slightly. Maybe alter the angle. Overlap. I mean, these are just these little what I'm just doing right here. These are things that I do to make my characters do what you've got to do to make your characters look the way you want to make them look. I mean, everybody wants their own unique style. Mine's not necessarily super duper new unique. New unique. <laughs> um, oops. Group them first. But mess about. Look up the people's work. Combine things. Combine things that you like from four or five different people and just make them your own. That's basically what it's all about. Um, right, okay. We're almost there with our bear. Want to ungroup those. I'm sorry. Now everything's straightened up. I grouped everything. So it's grouped. I'll do it again. I'll stop twaffling on. Here we are. Group them. Ungroup them. Take your outer ears. Take your center shape. Our bare head. And we're going to use a unite tool. We're going to make them ears. See how that would have worked if we were to take this shape. I mean, even if we were to just take this shape now and say, oh, I mean, I fancy actually. It would be better if it had a point in it. Like, um, 
a little bit more character to his ear. So we'll use the C, C, uh, V tool. I'm sorry. Control V tool. Oh. Yes, it looks like a V, so it's a V tool. There you go. Convert anchor tool. Use Shift and C. Make a point, which is also another way of making a drop pin, as you've seen them all over the internet and on your apps and stuff. That's how you make a drop pin. Um, now, of course, forget what I've just done there. Because if I were to rotate it, it's, only, it's rotating to its own center point. Um, and that would be up here, not the center point of our uh, outer circle or itself. Um, so I'm going to copy and paste that. Um, now, Control V, drag it down, select our outer circle there. Oh, I'm sorry. Now we've got our outer circle. If you have you noticed, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> our circle has a center point, which is what we want to rotate from. Our new shape, our center point, has moved down because we've elongated our shape. So we select both, shift and click the ones you want. Rotate tool, which is just R on the keyboard. Hit the old center point, take our end point and drag it around to wherever you want. Holding shift will make it nice and direct. And you can always ref oh, reflect that and drag it over so it lines up nicely, locks on top of our other ear round those corners off and drop our bare face so it's not too high to his ears. Ta-da! A bear! Two bears! Nice little chubby one. Group. Group them. Uh, a little shapely elongated one. Here you make our little hearts. Ah, oh, bear love. Not in the uh, rude boy sense, bear, love, or the French, or is it German? I don't know. It came from another language, bear for great or big, stupid. <laughs> anyway, here we are. Ah, oh, there you go. That is. All I really wanted to show you, um, how to make a couple of hearts, because they're actually quite tricky, and you're trying to think about ways to make them. I know it's not like a shape that you'd use on every single illustration, but it's always a uh, it's always good to know how. Um, and just a few ways of a few little uh, tools to use, a few little tricks and tricks of the trade of manipulating shapes and such. Um, I hope you have fun with them. You don't have to make a bear, you know. Do whatever you like. Make a dog. Make a cat. Uh, make a giraffe. Whatever you like. Um, just have fun. Um, experiment. And, um, yeah. Go with the flow. Have a good time. Um, that's all from me. I'll, uh, I'll see you in my next tutorial. Okay. Bye.